Merry Christmas. Welcome to Southeast Online. We are thrilled that you've set aside this next hour to engage in the story of the birth of Jesus. And we're just glad that you're here. I want to let you know this is true every day, but even on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, if you want to get connected with, we try to make that really easy for you to do. Just text the word CONNECT uh, to 733733 and we will connect with you. You know, as we think about the birth of Jesus and that story, what I want you to know is this is more than just, you know, a holiday that we celebrate. This is the story. This is the story that changes all of creation and it can change all of eternity for you. And so we would love to be able to serve you during the season and for you to be connected to this story and your story. Glad that you're here. Thanks for joining us. Well, Merry Christmas. Thanks so much for joining us today to celebrate Jesus, uh, the light and the hope of the world. In an ever-changing pace of life, uh, we just find comfort today in belonging to a God that is the same yesterday and today and forever. And so here's the deal. Every year, we just take a little time to slow down and remember the birth of Jesus and what that really means for us. That God moved into the neighborhood and He lived among us and He walked with us. And He just wanted to show us how to live in this world. And so we just want you to know today, family, you matter to Him, you matter to God, your life matters so much to Him. And Christmas reminds us the links that God will go to show us the extravagant love that He has for us. So here's the deal, before we get into service, we just wanna take a few minutes and just share a few things. First off, we are really excited to announce that we're launching a new magazine in January. And you hear us all the time, we, we wanna unleash the full force of the church to just love people one at a time. And so this collection of stories will highlight just the countless ways that God is at work in our community and around the world. It's easy to forget sometimes just the impact that our church has, and we just hope that you're encouraged by these stories. But also, we just we just hope you get challenged. Just step out in faith wherever God's leading you. So just make sure you keep an eye out for the Unleashed magazine coming in January. Uh, speaking of January, we're also starting a brand new series called One at a Time. And as you know, Jesus was like the ultimate influencer, but it was how he influenced that made all the difference. So we're just gonna dig into the life of Jesus and we're gonna discover that living a life that counts for something doesn't require having a super talent or being insta-famous. It's about the everyday intentionality of just noticing and connecting with and loving people one at a time. So we just wanna invite you, join us for the series. And if you don't have a church home and you're just visiting, love ya. We just specifically like to challenge you to give this series a try. We'd love to see you in person. So here's the deal, family, no matter where you are today, you might be with friends, you might be with family, you might be by yourself, but I hope that you know uh, you matter to God. You matter to this church. So here's the deal, stick around after the service. We would love to meet you. But thanks so much for celebrating Jesus with us today. So here's the deal, service is gonna begin in just a few minutes, but from our hearts to yours, Merry Christmas, family. Merry Christmas. The night that Jesus was born, there were shepherds tending their sheep in a nearby field. When suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and the shepherds, not knowing what was happening, were so afraid. But then the angel said, Do not be afraid, for I bring 
good news of great joy for all the people. And that means me, and that means you. It means everyone in this room. It means every person, each of you, will ever meet. And this is such good news. The good news that makes you want to laugh and cry and sing and dance. Good news of great joy. The good news that Jesus was born and that he came to earth for you and everyone in it. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. There are around 700 years between this promise in Isaiah and its fulfillment in the birth of Jesus. And in those years of waiting, God's word of hope helped his people sustain through dark times. At Christmas, we celebrate that that word did not return empty and his word continues to sustain us, no matter how dark things may seem. When we don't know what to do, he is our wonderful counselor. When we don't know where to turn, he is our mighty God. No matter what family dynamics we have, he is our everlasting father. No matter how chaotic things may seem, he is the Prince of Peace. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. No matter what may come our way, our God is with us. And that's what we celebrate when we come together. And we just wanna say to every person here, Merry Christmas. We're so glad that you all could join us here at Southeast to worship and celebrate the Christmas season. If you're a first time guest, we would love to meet you right after service out in the main atrium. At our Connection Center, we'll have a special gift for you and we would love to just get to know you and the loved ones that you have with you. If you guys would go ahead and stand up, say hello to a few people around you and we're gonna celebrate the hope and joy of Jesus in this world. Come on, let's join together, church family. Get those hands together like this. Come on. Sing together. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let
Joy to the world.
It was a divine night. Can you even imagine being there? Can you imagine just standing there? Have you ever been long before there were cities that drowned out the stars with lights? Can you imagine the hillside and just to look up on a starry night and to just see the Milky Way literally before you and just go, wow, that power. But then as you're looking in a moment, a host of heavenly armors, the warriors of God appear and they just begin to sing. Glory to God in the highest in peace on those on whom his favor rests. You can even imagine <laughs> to just stand there as after reading the 300 plus prophecies that would explain that literally it would define and describe this night in perfect detail. The night when God would no longer just stay distant as the one who was a creator, but that he would come close, that a savior was coming. Can you imagine being there to recognize that every single one of his promises was true? Can you imagine the moment of his birth? Y'all, I have five kids, having babies is amazing. It's miraculous. I've been in the room, but this child was not like any other child. This child was immaculately conceived. And when this baby came out, you recognize what you are holding in your hands. The king of the universe has come. And he didn't come to a palace. He didn't come as a middle-aged warrior. He came as a child. And in your hands, you recognize in this moment that everything just changed. That this child is not here to condemn. This child is here to love. This child is here to serve. This child is here to teach us and to show us who God is and what he looks like. And that for us to recognize that God is not distant. Our God is one who comes close. You can get your hands on him. Moments like these, nights like these, they're so special to me. Family coming around, opening scripture. Sometimes people that haven't done it normal, I just, I would love to encourage you, just open the scripture and just read again the beauty of that night, the beauty of Christmas. So here's what we wanna do in this moment. We just wanna celebrate Jesus. So we're about to take communion together and some of you, as you came in, you picked up a cup, and in that cup there is a piece of bread that is symbolic of the body of Christ that was broken for you. And the cup is representative of his blood that was poured out for you. But as you hold those tonight, in a moment unlike any other during the year, I just pray that you would just stop just pray that you would imagine and I pray that you would remember the gift of Jesus. Let's take communion together.
past my mind to Calvary when Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree his body bowed and drenched in they laid him down in Joseph's tomb, the entrance seen by every stone, Messiah still, and all of every voice sang, oh praise to the name, and oh praise the name. The Son of Heaven rose again And all trampled death Where is your sting? The angels roar For Christ the King Oh praise, oh praise the name Of the Lord our God God, we just declare together that our hope is in you and in you alone. Lord, we recognize that nothing else really holds up, can't carry the weight. And you are the one hope that doesn't disappoint. And so we put our hope and our confidence in your name. And God, I am thankful that there are so many here today that have gathered to celebrate your birth, that you so loved the world that you gave your only son. And we, we take a few moments here and we celebrate when you came to earth as a baby, but God, we would be so foolish to celebrate that you came without stopping and recognizing that you are coming again. But when you come again, you will not come as a helpless baby. You will come as a conquering king. And so I pray, God, that you would let us think and live as people who are closer to your return than 
we are to when you came the first time. And let us be prepared. God, I know there are people here who are struggling and they walk in here and they're tired and weary. I pray that they would give you their burdens, that they would find strength in you, that you would be their prince of peace. I know there are people here who don't even wanna be here it's not even a tradition for them. They feel forced into it. It was against their will to come and, and they're here because they're trying to make someone else happy. But what I believe is that you have a message for them that it's not an accident that they're in this room listening to this message, that they are here because you want them to know of how deeply you love them and care for them and how much you want them to put their hope in you. So I pray that you would allow us not to just come in here to celebrate something that happened a long time ago, but that what happened a long time ago would change everything in our lives right now. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. You can be seated. So um, we all have some Christmas traditions, at least I think most of us do. Some of you grew up with some weird Christmas traditions. You didn't know they were weird at the time, but then later in life you found out that, oh, nobody else does these. And you just had a strange family. But a lot of us share traditions. Like I never heard of Elf on the Shelf. Never even knew that that was a thing in my childhood. We, we had a thing that my wife did with our kids where we um, would bake a cake for Jesus on Christmas Eve and then on Christmas Day, we'd throw Jesus a birthday party. And I was great because it just, it just so happened that his favorite kind of cake is my favorite kind of cake. And, and so we would do this as a way to teach our kids that Christmas is the birthday of Jesus. Maybe, probably not though. Like December 25th, for many of you, you grew up thinking, oh, that's the birthday of Jesus. Well, I, I mean, it's possible. Like there's, there's a, to be technical about this, there's like a one in 365 chance that that was the day Jesus was born. We don't know when he was born. That's the truth. And yet, I would tell you this, that December 25th is not a random day that was just picked off a calendar. Instead, here's what happened. About 300 days after Jesus was born, or 300 years after Jesus was born, the, the early church said, hey, we wanna set aside one day to celebrate his birth, to have a, a, a birthday for Jesus. And there were a few factors that came into play, but when they were identifying what day that would be, they looked at the calendar, they picked this day that was in the middle of what was called winter solstice, and it was thought to be the coldest and the darkest day of the year. December 25th, the coldest and darkest day of the year is the day that we are going to celebrate that Jesus was born and he brought light and life into the cold and dark world. That's how December 25th came to be. And that's how John recognizes the birth of Jesus. It says that Jesus brought light to everyone the light that shines in the darkness and the darkness has, can never extinguish it. The darkness has not overcome it. And that's what we celebrate at Christmas. That in this cold, dark world, light and life has come. And so while I understand that some of you are here because it's kind of a tradition, I also understand that there are many of you who are experiencing the darkness and the coldness of this world in a way that you never have before and what you think is just a tradition, is really God trying to break through into your world with the light and the life of Jesus Christ. And it's not an accident that you're listening to this today. When we read about the very first Christmas in Luke 2, some of this was already read for us, about the night where that announcement was made of the birth of Christ. It says the time came for the baby to be born and Mary gave birth to her firstborn a son and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were, they were terrified, but the angel said to them, the angel speaks into the darkness of night and says, don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the city of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And so into the dark, cold night, this declaration is made. Good news of great joy. And I know there are a lot of different people here with a lot of different perspectives and opinions and backgrounds and traditions, but there's probably one thing most of us would agree on and that is, um, we are inundated with news these days, and most of it feels like it's, like it's bad news. 
like we're gonna get notifications on our phones, our smartwatches during the service. And I doubt that any of those news notifications will be such that you look at it and will be like, well, that's good news of great joy. Like that's not our common response to the news. Instead, when we get a news notification, it, it, it triggers us. Like we're suddenly aware of something that's happening and it's not gonna be good. And so we're bracing ourselves. Is there a new variant? Is there, is there some new mandate that's coming out? Is, is there some horrible catastrophic event that's happening somewhere around the world in real time? Is, is there some new prediction of the end of the world, doomsday, impending doom? Like we, we are always getting these news stories and social scientists would tell you that that is true, that news has kind of a, a bad news bent to it, that there's this negativity bias. And what we tend to do is we, we blame news organizations or you know, social media algorithms, but really all that they're doing is reflecting what we tend to be drawn to, what we give our attention to. And so statistically speaking, about 90% of the news stories that are out there, about 90% of them have a negativity bias. They kind of have a bad news bent to them. So it's not just that it feels that way, it is that way. Like 90% of the stories are that way. But because we are consumers, we are the ones that drive that. Um, it used to be that we were receivers of news, right? Like news would come to us through different mediums, platforms. Now we're consumers of news. So we can go to it, pursue it, click on it, scroll until we find it, right? And because of that, what we look for, what we give attention to has a way of determining the headlines and the tone of whatever it is we're reading. And there's actually some science behind this. Like the, we all have in our brain what's called the amygdala. And the amygdala is, is um, like your alert system. It, it's your danger detector. The way it works is it, it pays attention to anything that could be a threat, anything that could be dangerous to you. Probably was helpful a few hundred years ago when you might have heard a stampede in the distance. Like, well, that's a problem. But now we're just surrounded by all kinds of things, all kinds of news, all kinds of information. And our amygdala is wired in such a way to filter through that and say, well, that's a problem, that's a problem, that's a problem. And, and we find ourselves surrounded by it. It's actually a term to describe this. It's gonna show up in Webster's Dictionary next year. It's called, it's called doom, doom scrolling. You heard this? Doom scrolling. It's what you would guess. It, you just scroll through and you don't even know why you're doing it. You're just scrolling through reading bad news. And you, you don't know, why, like, why am I starting my day this way? Why, why am I ending my day by just paying attention to everything bad that's happening around me? But, but we're... We're kind of wired to pay attention to things that are bad. And what we know is that this is a dark and this is a cold world. And I don't have to give you a lot of examples to make my point. Like, you know that this is a cold and dark place. And, and so the Bible would teach us that into the cold and dark night, the Christmas message brings us light and life. The message of scripture is not to put your hope in this world and in this life. The message of scripture is not, hey, this life is gonna get better and better. And it, it, the message of scripture is not health and wealth in this moment and for this season. The message of scripture is that this life is temporary and this life can be hard and cold and dark. But the purpose of this life is to prepare for the next. And this life is just a moment. And so the angel comes, gives good news of great joy. What makes it good news of great joy is that a savior has been born and he's come at just the right time. A savior has been born to save us from our sins. I uh, came across a, a website last week and the website just kept track of letters that kids have left for Santa. I especially liked uh, this one. A um, kid wrote, Dear Santa, there are three boys living in my house. Jeffrey is two, Jared is four, Jake is seven. Jeffrey is good some of the time. Jared is good some of the time. Jake is good all the time. I am Jake. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that mentality of a seven-year-old tends to be the spirit that we have. Like we, we try not to think of ourselves as someone who needs saved from sin. Instead, what we do is we compare ourselves 
to someone else in society and we think, well, compared to them, I'm doing fine. Compared to this person over here, I think I'm, I'm doing okay. And so we try to grade ourselves on the scale, but the Bible says that all of us have sinned and all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. And the only hope that we have is to be saved by Jesus. Like that is, that is the only hope that we have. If we want heaven to be our home, if we want to experience the eternal life that God has promised us, that only happens through Jesus Christ. That's the that is the good news of great joy that God has made a way. And there's some people who complain about, well, what, there's only one way? There's a way, and it doesn't cost you anything. It's free, a free gift that God gives to all who would receive it. And, and this announcement of a savior is made in Luke 2, but it's not the first time that announcement is made. First time it's made all the way back, first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter three. And that scene we watch as Adam and Eve sin against God. And the moment they sin, the world gets colder and darker. The moment they sin, they separate themselves from God. They separate themselves from each other. They separate themselves from nature. Like everything is out of sync. And it's in that moment that we read the first announcement of Christmas, the first prophecy, prediction, promise of a Messiah, of a savior that would come. And then from then in Genesis, all the way into the New Testament when Jesus is born, what we see is God preparing the world, that God is planning and working and being intentional to prepare the world for a savior. And all of that, Old Testament leading up to the birth of Christ, reveals just how thoughtful the gift of Jesus really is. Shows us just how loved we really are. There was a video that was uh, sent to me a couple of weeks ago. Um, and when I watched it, it, it had a pretty strong impact on me. Uh, take a look, it's a couple of minutes long.
Yeah, so what you're plotting for, just so you know, is a commercial for an exercise company trying to convince you to do more squats. <laughs> so, but it's genius. I, what I love about that video is that for a long time, people don't understand what the grandfather is doing. They don't, can't make sense of it. They, they see him working, they see him hitting the alarm, they see him getting up and getting out and being intentional. They don't understand what's happening, but, but he has this moment in mind that he's working towards. And he puts the picture of his granddaughter in front of him and he uses that to motivate. He, he is reminded of his love for her and this moment that he wants to have with her. And I, I, I love that video because to me, it's an example of what we see throughout the Old Testament and into the New Testament where Jesus is born. We see God, a father who loves you, loves you so much that he is preparing the world for his son. And so we celebrate that a savior was born and it comes at just the right time, just the right time. And one of the things that I realized as a pastor over the years is that my timing is certainly not God's timing. You know, I see things unfold one moment at a time. He sees things all at once. And I'll pray for certain people at certain times to really understand God's love for them. And, and I don't understand why it's so hard or what's taking so long and why doesn't God move in some dramatic way. And, and then at just the right time, Jesus breaks through. And I really, I listen, I really do believe that for some of you, this is that, this is that moment. God's been working in your life for this moment. And there's been some hard things that have happened. There's been some things that you were leaning on that aren't there anymore. And he wants you to realize and recognize that your one savior, your one true hope is Jesus. The other thing that makes us such good news when the angel makes this announcement, he says it's for all people. It's not just for some people, it's for all people. What makes good news good news is when you're included in it. And that makes a difference. And the fact that this announcement gets made to the shepherd kind of proves the shepherds, proves the point. Because shepherds in those days um, were not looked upon with favor. They lived out in the hills. The, the word shepherd was sometimes used as a derogatory name for people. It's a smelly, dirty, unsophisticated, kind of like redneck today, although that's a bad example because you know, I, know, I know some of you listening to this consider that to be a, a compliment and a term of endearment. But, but, but that was the idea of a shepherd back then. And... And they weren't just thought of to be physically unclean. The religious community had said to the shepherds, you're spiritually unclean. They couldn't come into the religious community. Uh, and so they weren't even allowed to be a witness in court. It, it, these are the people whom the angel appears to, to declare light and life of Jesus has come. And if it's true for them, then it's, it's true for you. And the angel doesn't say, hey, I bring you good news of great joy and you can go and, and see Jesus, but are you gonna wear that? Like, why don't you go shower first and find something presentable? No, it's like, come as you are. And, and the, the wise men and the shepherd are two completely opposite ends of the social spectrum. And I think what's happening there is the story is, is for everyone. As a church, we just finished up this um, series called Empty the Jar, where we challenged our church family to give a, an offering at the end of the year that's over and beyond their regular giving as a way to just express gratitude for God's generosity towards us through Jesus. And, and I was so inspired, so inspired just how our church came together, but I was just struck by how it's, it's all people. Like, I gotta tell you about what happened a week and a half or so ago. I, I was in my office and I got a message that over the weekend that, that someone had left a really large offering. And the reason it was sent to me as a message to let me know is because it pretty much never happens. Like, it's in, incredibly rare, but someone left like a, a six-figure offering. And I was... Uh, kind of blown away by that. I was thinking about all the ways that God might use that in 2022. And, and within that same hour, I, I got an envelope in my office. So I opened up the envelope and it was from a prisoner who's a part of our church family behind bars in prison. And he heard about what we were doing here at the end of the year and he wanted to give a gift, but he didn't have any money. He does have a job in prison, but in, in prison, they don't pay you in dollars. Like that's not their currency. Their currency is stamps. And the stamps are only good in the prison. 
And you use those stamps then for, you know, snacks and supplies and comforts. And inside the envelope, he had um, included his offering, these stamps. And so within an hour, here's what happened. Got a message about a, a six-figure gift. I don't know who gave it. Like as a church, we don't, leadership doesn't know who gives what. So if, if that's you and you're waiting for a thank you note, sorry. I got a, a six <laughs> message about this six-figure gift. And then I got these stamps from a prisoner. And I love that. Like I think this is such a beautiful reflection of Christmas. I mean, how does that happen? Why does that happen? It's because it's for all people. It's for all people. That's good news. A friend of mine was working on um, better understanding John three sixteen for God so loved the world. And, and, you know, the world is kind of this broad term and what's that mean really? And so he, he started to just use the alphabet as a way to mark down and write down all of the people that God loved all in the world. And... Um, and, and so I started working on this and adding to it a little bit and thinking about all people, good news of great joy for all people. Like, who's that mean? And just wanna work my way through the alphabet here. Good news of great joy for all people. A, airline pilots, attorneys, ambulance drivers, artists, acrobats, astrologers, auditors. The Amish, Anglicans, adulterers, the agnostics, the atheists, the addicts, the arrogant, the absent-minded. All people. B, babies, babysitters, Baptists, boy bands, blondes, brunettes, and blue hairs, the bullied and the bullies, the brave, the bossy, the bitter, the bummed out, the burned out, the broke, and the broken. It's all people. C, Canadians and Cambodians and Cubans and Mark Cuban and CEOs and custodians and cooks and crooks and criers and cutters and crystal meth users and Critics and cat lovers and critics of cat lovers. <laughs> All people, D, dads, Democrats, dishwashers, deadbeats, drag racers, drag queens, drama queens, disc jockeys, and the dude who's gonna cut you off on the way home. <laughs> e, Elvis impersonators, environmental activists, evolutionists, exaggerators, emoji users, and Eminem. F, <laughs> faithful and the faithless, fearful and the fearless, the forgetful and forgotten, the frustrated and the finicky. G, the good, the grateful, the generous, the greedy, the gassy, the glamorous, the gullible, the grouchy, the guilty, all people. The hard workers, the hardly working, the harsh, the homeless, the homosexual, the homophobic, the Harley riders, the hipsters. I, India, Indiana, introverts, influencers, illusionists, IRS agents, J, janitors, jugglers, and late night jammers, and late night talk show hosts named Jimmy. K, Chloe, Courtney, Kim, Kendall, Kylie, <laughs> Kanye, and all the Karens. <laughs> L, lazy, loud, the lousy, lethargic, the landscaper, the lawyer, the lunch ladies, the latte lovers, the left-handed. M, mimes, Mennonites, missionaries, moms, mask wearers, meticulous, Mischievous, malicious, and Miley and Madonna and Marilyn, both Monroe and Manson. In the nerdy, the needy, the narrow minded, the naive, the narcissistic, Nicki Minaj, New York Knicks, all those who love Nickelodeon. Oh, the obese, the obnoxious, the old fashioned, and every name you've ever read in the obituary. P, preachers, pimps, politicians, police officers, protesters, progressives, pornographers, prostitutes, pill poppers, the pushy and the prideful. Q, the quiet, the quitters, the questioning, Queen of England and Queen Latifah. <laughs> R, Russians, Rwandans, real estate agents, Republicans, road ragers, the responsible, the rebellious, the reclusive, and those filled with regret. S, the sassy, the spunky, the sarcastic, the serious, the South Africans and Somalis, the smokers, the strippers, and all those who wear house slippers. The T, the telegraph, the, the telemarketers, the television reporters, the trainers, the teenagers, the transgressors, transgenders, the talented, the timid, and all those who are train wreck. V, victorious, victims, vegetarians, vaccinated, people from Virginia. W, the well-behaved and the wicked and the warrior and the whiny and the wildcat fan and the windshield washer and the waitress. And the waitress who works at Waffle House and the woman who weighs you in a Weight Watchers. 
X, X-ray technicians, uh, the xenophobic uh, xylophone players, <laughs> and, and those with the X factor. Y, the young, the yappy, the yuppies, and loud yawners. Z, the zealous, the zany, and uh, the zookeepers. And, and I, almost, I almost forgot you. Young you, adolescent you, and old you, and you without makeup, and you without muscles, and you at your best, and you at your worst, and confused you, and content you, and timid you, and silly you, and self-conscious you, and arrogant you, and unemployed you, and entitled you, and fearful you, and lonely you, and guilty you, and bitter you, and brokenhearted you, adorable you, and unlovable you, single you, and divorced you, separated you, and widowed you, angry you, and cynical and cowardly you. I bring you good news of great joy. And it's for all people, a savior has been born. That's what the name Jesus means, it just means savior. Every time you say his name, you're speaking salvation. Jesus saves. And so he's where we put our hope this Christmas. I don't know if you've seen this video. It, um, it came out of the tragic events on December 10th going into December 11th where tornadoes um, brought a lot of devastation to parts of Kentucky. But there was a, a story of a, a man named Jordan Bays and he and his family, they rushed into the basement and they huddled together under a mattress just before the tornado hit and a property that had been in his family for generations, was, it was completely destroyed. And Jordan had, had played the piano for, for years and there's a, a video going around where he, he thought it was just kind of this quiet and personal moment in the midst of such loss, but, but it got recorded. Some of you recognize the hymn he was playing. There's something about that name. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. It was written about 51 years ago by Bill and Gloria Gaither. It's been sung for generations in the church. I, I, um, when I saw that video, I texted it to Bill Gaither and I said, hey, I don't know if you've seen this yet, but our state was hit hard by tornadoes and, and this, um, gentleman Jordan is playing the hymn you wrote a long time ago that's encouraging us all these year later, years later. Please pray for us. And he replied to my text. He just texted me back one lyric from that hymn that he wrote 51 years ago. Here's the lyric he texted me. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away. And he's right. Like our hope is in Jesus. There's something about that name. But understand that kings and kingdoms will all pass away. Anything or anyone else that you put your hope in will disappoint you and let you down. It will not hold up in the end. It's only the name of Jesus. And so this Christmas, we celebrate that our hope is in him. Our hope is in him alone. And this is good news of great joy for all people. Let's pray. God, I thank you that, that we can come together and we can celebrate your gift towards us to us of Jesus, that you, from the very beginning, from the moment sin entered the world, you prepared the world for, for your son. 
And so I, I thank you that this is a gift that's still available. It's available to anyone who's listening to this t- today, but it's just not automatically theirs. It's a gift that, like all gifts, needs to be received. And the way that we receive that is, is by submitting ourselves and surrendering ourselves over to you and by believing in you. You love the world. You gave your only son that whoever would believe in you. So I pray that you would, would help us take a step towards belief deeper belief. I pray for the person listening to this that came in, and this is just a tradition, but they know full well that this world is a cold, dark place. I pray that you would help them in this moment believe that you are the light and the life that they've been missing. Thank you, Jesus, for coming, for saving us. Thank you that you have given this gift to all people. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Yeah. 
Well, about 2,000 years ago, Christ was born. And along with him came the good news that there's hope for all. And some of you came in here and you're feeling the burden of your immediate circumstance, whatever that is, and, and you just want a king to come in power and take that away. And he's a king. Others of you, you're desperately searching for health, wealth, favor, and you just want to see some sort of miracle. And he's a miracle worker. But what you need and what I need is the reason Jesus came at all. You need a savior. And we want to give you an opportunity to respond and receive that hope. Because here's the news. We're all sinners. But the good news is that a Savior came to take away your sin and bring hope, not just for this life, but forever. And his name is Jesus. So during this last song, or even when the service is over, we'd love some of our team to come alongside you and help you take that next step in your journey. In our next step room over here on your left, there'll be some folks I'd love to receive you. So we encourage you to do that after the service is over. Uh, we're gonna sing one more song uh, together as we close. Before we do that, we just wanna say a big thank you for joining with us and celebrating this time of year, celebrating Jesus. Now, the good news, the light. And we pray that his spirit will be what guides you. Not our own, but his. And we have a bit of a tradition as we close our time, each time we celebrate Christmas Eve services by singing together a silent night. So I wanna invite you, if you've got a phone, pull out your phone, turn your light on. And if you have a flashlight, that's kind of weird, <laughs> but you can click that on too. But let's sing together.
Father, we thank you for Jesus, the Savior of the world, the hope that you gave us, the love that you showed us, and the joy that we get to carry deep in our chest, something this world can never take from us. And that's from you, and we just want to thank you and praise you and give you glory and honor, for you are so worthy. Thank you for the links that you went to to redeem every single person in this room. Thank you for your love and that grace and for this night. We say all of that in the name of Jesus. We all say, amen. amen. Merry Christmas, church family. Thank you for joining us for our Christmas Eve services with Southeast Online. We're thrilled uh, that you chose to be a part of that today. We'd love to follow up with you. If you have questions, want to get more involved, we've got a lot of online opportunities and on-campus opportunities that we can connect you with. Just text the word CONNECT uh, to 733-733 and we will do our best to get you connected to the best next step. You know, one of my favorite things about SE Online is we call it a family because it is. And so this is your SE Online staff family. And so from all of us to all of you, we want to say Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Bye guys.